Hello again from Digicore Things. As I now have a modular system with a flexible memory map, I thought it would be fun to mimic another simple 6809 system and to also get a BASIC interpreter up and running. Now I'm not really a fan of BASIC. I started out with microprocessors, so I was used to having the power and speed of using machine language on 8-bit microprocessors. So I found interpreted BASIC to be too slow and restrictive. But the worst was seeing teachers teaching kids how to write unstructured spaghetti BASIC code littered with go-to statements and totally unreadable. My initial high-level language of choice was eventually the wildly successful Borland Turbo Pascal compiler on the IBM PC. But as BASIC is the de facto standard amongst retro 8-bit computers, I thought it would be a fun exercise to see how quickly we can get BASIC up and running on our MECB 6809 system. From a quick Google search, I landed on Grant Searle's minimal 6809 computer design, where he utilised the TRS-80 Color Computer Extended BASIC as his choice of a good 6809 BASIC. Now there were a couple of things I needed to take care of. Firstly, Grant's 6809 design is based on 32k of RAM, 16k of ROM space, and an MC68B50 ACIA located at A000. Our current 64k memory map on our MECB6809 system has 56k of RAM and just 8k allocated for ROM space, with the ACIA at E008. Since the assembled BASIC ROM comes in at just under 10k, our existing 8k ROM space is clearly inadequate. Thinking ahead, we should probably allow for the possibility of adding some TMS 9929A video card support, or some sound support to the BASIC. Who knows? So I'm thinking that the 16k of ROM space probably sounds about right. I'd then naturally allocate the remaining 48k to RAM and move the I.O. page to still be at the beginning of the ROM space, or C000. If I leave the Motorola I.O. card's memory decoding as it currently is, that would then put the PTM at C000, the ACIA at C008, and the PIA at C010. Sounds good to me. So this just involves a change to the CPU card's PLD, to reassign the ROM and RAM chip select address space allocation. Also, a change to the CPU card's IO bank select dip switch to be at C0 instead of E0. Or, specifically, we just need to toggle the address line A13 switch to low, so we've just got A15 and A14 set high for the C0 bank. Let's take a look at WinCUPL for the PLD change. OK, so here's my original 6809 CPU card PLD source. If I scroll down to the bottom past the pin assignments, you'll see that I've separated the bus control logic from the chip select logic. As the bus control logic will probably be pretty standard for most users, so I've separated out the chip select and I've commented out the original chip select which was for 56k of RAM and 8k of ROM and just added the alternative for 48k of RAM and 16k of ROM. This is virtually identical except we don't no longer need to test the A13 address line because for C000 upward we only need to test A15 and A14 high and likewise that are not high for the RAM space below C000. OK, so we can compile that. And we're good. Next up is the second issue. Grant's version of the basic source is formatted for the old school official Motorola AS9 assembler. This original assembler has some quirks. Firstly, I think AS9 requires a DOS system to run. Secondly, 
one of the old Motorola assembler standards, is simply prone to allowing errors in your code. This is where the Motorola syntax allows a comment to follow any operands, separated only by blank space. This means that if you inadvertently mistyped an operand, the start of your comment might be taken as part of the operand, without generating errors and creating unintended code. Another quirk of AS9 that I discovered is that the expression evaluation doesn't follow the normally expected operator precedence. Instead, it just evaluates expressions strictly left to right. So I decided that the first thing I should do is reformat the source code to allow assembly with the ASM6809 assembler that I have been using. This is a more refined assembler and also supports the Hitachi 6309 extensions. So first I needed to fix the missing semicolons to properly identify end of line comments. Fortunately, I noted most of the comments started from column 31 in the source. Therefore, I decided to use regex based search and replace to swap the 30th character in each line from a space to a semicolon. Where the 30th character was a space, and the space was followed by one or more non-space characters. Here's the regex I used and the search option. I've included an explanation of my regex. Note that I'm capturing the characters before the space and also after the space to allow reformatting the line with a semicolon instead of the space. So I specified the replace as shown with the explanation as shown. Having completed this, resolve 99% of the commenting issue, leaving only a few lines to fix where the comment didn't start at column 31. With the comment issue resolved, the next issue was ensuring the assembler used the correct addressing mode for the zero page. To resolve this, I noted that the 6809's direct page register is untouched by the code. Therefore, on reset, the direct page register defaults to the zero page. We therefore just need to tell the ASM6809 assembler about this with the set DP directive so that the assembler will use the most efficient addressing mode when accessing page 0. Next we needed to deal with the operator precedence issue. There are a number of code lines where an expression involves subtraction and division with the subtraction appearing before the division. To have these expressions evaluated correctly with ASM6809, which follows the correct operator precedence, we need to add some parentheses around the leading subtraction to ensure that it's processed before the division is, so we get the intended answer. Having made all these changes, and with successful assembly, the final step was checking the assembled binary file result. Grant had published an Intel Hex assembly of his AS9 version of the BASIC. I was therefore able to assemble an Intel Hex version with ASM6809 and confirm that the byte output of the assembly was identical. Interestingly, this exercise actually highlighted an apparent typo with Grant's original source. A compare A instruction operand at line 5075 specified direct addressing mode with a dollar character instead of immediate mode with a hash character. Other than this correction to my ASM6809 translation, our assembled hex files were identical. I've sent an email to Grant just to alert him to this apparent error in his published basic code. So finally, now that I have a safer version of the assembly source that I can assemble with ASM6809, I think I probably just need to make two initial changes to the code to allow it to run on our MECB system. Firstly, changing the ACIA address from A000 to C008. Secondly, I need to disable the ACIA interrupt. As Grant was using the IRQ output of the ACIA directly to implement a RTS function, our ACIA IRQ output is connected to the CPU's interrupt, as you would normally expect. So if we wanted an interrupt-driven serial interface, we'd need to investigate an interrupt service routine to handle that. So with these two changes made, 
in a new Intel hex file generated with the ASM6809 assembler, we just need to program a ROM chip. Let's do that now. As we have a 32K ROM, we also need to tell our programmer to load the code which starts at DB00 into the ROM space starting at 5B00, effectively offsetting the code so it appears at the top of our 32K ROM chip. OK, now we can get our programmed ROM chip and the updated PLD chip installed. Let's take out the old ROM. That was the ROM that we had a Systo 9 programmed into. And here's our replacement ROM, which has the new basic code installed. Then we'll take out the PLD. This PLD was the one set up for 56k of RAM and 8k of ROM. Here's our newly programmed PLD, which is set up for the 48k of RAM and 16k of ROM. Finally, I'll switch off the IO dip select switch, A13 address line, to change over to the C0 IO page. So we should be all ready to go with a system now configured for 48k of RAM in 16k of ROM and our I.O. device is now in the C0 memory page. Let's reinstall the CPU card. I've just decided to use the horizontal connector for this video as it makes the CPU card more visible. So let's turn it on and see what we get. And we're looking good with our Microsoft Extend Basic Starter. Let's check the available memory by executing print mem and we get negative 17,136. Interestingly this appears to show that this version of BASIC was written for a system that could have a maximum of 32k of RAM. The decimal value of negative 17136 is a 16-bit 2's complement equivalent of xdb10. So this does equate to our 48k of RAM. A 2's complement 16-bit number can of course only represent a positive decimal integer value of up to 32767. So our 48k of RAM is being recognised, just not able to be reported appropriately as just under 48k available. Note that the existing basic code dynamically determines the available memory by stepping through the memory space with a RAM test to locate the end of RAM. I guess it is interesting that the test extends beyond 32k even though the 2's complement reporting of the mem value is limited to 32767 bytes. So let's finish off with a simple hello world loop just to check our interpreter appears to be working as expected. So I'll enter print hello world with a semicolon at the end so we don't get a new line and then go to 10 to loop. So let's list that and let's run it and control C to break out of it. Okay. I'll be sure to put the ASM6809 compatible assembly source, the assembled Intel hex file and a 32k ROM binary image file up on the MECB GitHub repository for anybody who wants to play with this. That's it. Thanks for watching.